Hello, Taurus viewers. I'm going to look into what your person's thinking, feeling, wanting, um, or whatever the cards want to say, really. I mean, it's, usually it's about love, but sometimes the cards want to talk about finances, career, um, other important life changes. So just whatever the story is, you know, take it if it resonates. We have willpower, strength, confidence. We have sadness. We have codependency and addiction. We have spying. Hmm. Someone. Someone's addicted to your energy. Someone's not letting go of you. Somebody's sad over you. Somebody's crying over you right now. Somebody's really upset right now. I feel like somebody tried to be strong. So this could be someone that ended it with you. And they tried to be strong, but they're caving. Because we have willpower, strength, and confidence here. So this is someone who like mustered up all the strength in them. They might have told themselves that it was in your best interest. Like you were better off without them. Or you guys are just too different. Or they made some kind of excuse. Maybe some of them had like a karmic situation. Some kind of drama going on. There's just some situation here where someone tried to be strong and move past you and let you go. Um, it could just be like, you know, like wrong timing, you know, right person, wrong timing kind of energy. But I feel like this person's breaking down. I feel like with this retrograde energy, Mercury retrograde, it typically brings back exes. So I feel like someone, you know, they tried to be strong. They might have chosen someone else over you. They might have, this could be like a third party situation where they might have stayed for the kids or they stayed because the karmic was threatening something or because it was familiar or comfortable or like maybe they stayed in like an old job or they didn't want to move. I almost, I just get the sense of like comfortability. Like somebody didn't want to leave something that made them comfortable, even though they weren't truly happy. Now this could be a karmic situation. This could be a job. This could be, um, this, this could be a, just a way of life. It's just some kind of situation where someone, Someone chose the wrong thing here. Someone chose something else or someone else over you. And they they tried to be strong. They tried to be confident. They tried to be logical. They tried to they they thought they were being smart. They thought it was they thought they were being logical. They thought that you know that you'd be happier without them or that you know it was just better off with this way. They kind of like kind of like denial energy. Like they knew that you're the one. They knew that you were their person, but they tried to tell themselves that it's better for you guys to go your separate ways. And now they're breaking down. Now they're breaking down. Some of them, it's like maybe you didn't give them any more of your energy and they're shocked. Like they thought you would chase them or something or they thought that um, they weren't. It was like almost like a hasty decision that was made here. Where in the moment... You know how like in the moment like you think that you might be getting over someone or like in the moment you feel like... Like you just feel like you're all big and bad and then a couple weeks later it's like something happens and you just break down and you just cry and cry and cry. And it's like that kind of energy where like in the moment they thought they were all tough. They thought they were doing the right thing. They thought this was the logical decision. They chose money or another person or another job or something else over you. But now they're breaking down. I see that they're very sad. I see this person is having sleepless nights. They're up late thinking about you. Some of these people are writing letters to you, but they're not um, sending them. Like they're wanting to talk, but they're realizing how much they messed up. Because I just see that some kind of hasty decision was made. They didn't think this through. They just were in the moment. And in the moment, they told themselves it was for the best. And now they're really sad and they're addicted to your energy. They they miss you. They're codependent on you. They miss you. And some of them are spying. Some of you, you have platforms on of your own and they're spying on you. They're watching you. Like they're watching your, your videos or they're watching you on social media, watching your posts, asking mutual friends about you, trying to see what you're up to, see if they still have a chance. Someone's wanting to make a love offer. Someone's wanting to commit. Yeah, someone is choosing, someone has had a change of heart and they want to choose love over fear, risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear. Someone just feels like they made a huge mistake. Yeah, some of them, I feel like, I think for a lot of you, they chose a third party. So a third party isn't always a person. I mean, it can be. Sorry, let me straighten this out for you guys here. Let me try to get these over so you guys can see them better. Um, 
risk reward bull gesture choosing love over fear so i feel like you know like third party isn't always it isn't always um a person i mean a lot of times it is but sometimes it's just a karmic lesson some of them might have chosen like a job or something else over you or like maybe you asked them to start a new life with you to move somewhere else with you and they didn't they didn't want to they wanted to stay in their comfort zone there's basically just this energy where they had a chance to take a leap of faith they had a chance to start a new chapter with you and they chose to stay in their comfort zone even though they weren't truly happy there some of them, like I said, have like an obligation, like they have kids or they have something going on. So they feel like they, like they, they put their heart aside and they, they made the logical decision. And now they're realizing what a mistake that was to choose someone or something else over you. And now it's like there's pride and stubbornness and pain on both ends where it's like these two people that want to talk are not talking. And someone, I mean, both of you are afraid of rejection now. Both of you are afra afraid to send a message. Both of you are in this power struggle. Because it's like there's there's pain there, you know what I mean? Like there's, this might have come as a shock to you. Some of you, like you guys were okay and then it's like this person just kind of like detached or this person like ran off or ghosted you or something and it was like, like you just didn't expect it. Like you felt like you guys were doing well. And then all of a sudden it's like this, what could have been, you know, pure and wonderful turned into a power struggle and we have um, taking it in, pulling them in, getting to know each other. Yeah, so you're, you're sitting pretty right here. You're not male or female. You're not giving in to them. You're not, you know what I mean? I think that they expected you to chase them. I think that's the thing is that they made the logical decision, but it's almost like they wanted you to talk them out of it or they wanted you to, um, some of them might have wanted to challenge you. Some of them almost... Some of these people, it's almost like, like a toxic, sabotaging kind of energy where it's like they like the attention. Like they like being chased. They like being like this person, for some of you, not for all of you, but for a few of you, I feel like your person almost likes to be babied where it's like they like to be chased. They thought that they thought you would talk them out of this. They thought that you would compete with the karmic they chose over you. They thought that you would try, you know, for some of you, it was like a living situation or a job. They thought that you would try harder to convince them to move in with you or to move to a new location with you. They thought you would try harder to, um, you know, whatever the situation is, it's, it's all the same energy group, but there's different variations of the story. You know, for some, the third party was a person, but for some, the third party was a job or a living situation or something else. Some other outside energy that separated you could be friends, family, like gossip, rumors that separated you as well. Some of them might have listened to rumors about you that maybe like you, they have like a mother or father or like toxic friends that don't like you. Some gossiping, like some competition and they kind of listen to them. And some of you were just like, you know what? Okay, go ahead and sabotage this. Like, like you were heartbroken. You were upset. You were confused. But like some of you were just like, you know what? I'm going to put my pride in my self-worth first, no matter how much I miss this person, no matter how much it hurts. And I think that this person really thought that you would chase them. This person thought that you would come running after them, that you would try to convince them that the rumors weren't true, or you would try to convince them to come live with you, or you would try to fight with the karmic and convince them to leave the karmic or whatever. And you're, you're just in your power. You're like, you know what? This is breaking my heart, but I know what I deserve. And you're just, you just kind of stood in your power. And as heartbroken as you were, you didn't let this person see how much pain you were in. You're like, you know what, this person doesn't deserve to see my pain after what they just did. That was such a, you know, they made the wrong decision. So some of you, it's like you just weren't, it's like you weren't willing to, um, to give in to this. You know, some of you, it's like a codependent cycle that you kept repeating with this person. Um, and if you'd like a private reading, just send me an email. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. My email is right below in the description box below this video, so you can just copy and paste it. You can find it right below. And uh, please donate if you can, if you can afford to, even just a dollar. My donation links are below. And please subscribe if this resonates. I do these readings regularly, um, twice a month, and then I also do third party and twin flame and soulmate readings pretty often as well. Probably be doing some financial readings sooner here, um, sooner or later. But anyway, um, yeah. So it's like someone just, someone thought, someone took you for granted or they, they had like a certain image of you in their head. 
like they they saw your softer like kind of angelic side and this could be male or female you know take it as it resonates because you could be a male and still have that soft empathetic loving side you know what i mean like men have that side too like all of us do but i just get the sense that like someone saw a certain side of you and they kind of were almost like biased it's like this person's very like um almost like narrow-minded almost like a little bit like they're not worldly is what I keep hearing. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like they're, I don't want to say not experienced because I'm sure they've been through a lot, but it's almost like they're, by, like it's almost like a my way or the highway kind of energy where they put people in these little easy to understand boxes and then they can't realize, they don't realize how diverse you are. They, they didn't comprehend how diverse you were basically is what I'm getting here. Where it's like you were angelic and soft and you were like motherly or fatherly kind of energy. Like you were, you were caring, you were loving, and they loved that about you. They they love that about you. That's part of why they fell in love with you. But I think that they assumed that you'd always be in that energy. I think they assumed that you would always reassure them. You would always chase them. You would always pursue them. You would always say, oh, baby, I love you. We're going to get through this. I'm never going to leave your side. And when they made this stupid decision and chose someone or something else over you and you didn't show them that energy that they were used to they were kind of shocked because you you showed them that you can be a bitch or that you can be kind of a dick if you need to be you showed them that you do actually have that backbone that you can you have a whole nother side to you where you can be sweet and angelic but you know what if they mess around they're gonna find out and you're you can be harsh you can be cold you can be distant you can be mean even um, you could be cold-hearted even if someone messes with you. And they didn't expect that. They thought that you would just be angelic and sweet all the time. They thought that was just like, like they can't, it's strange. It's like they, they're almost like, it's almost like a mental disorder or something that they, I don't know if it's like a mental disorder they have, but it's like almost something where it's like something with their mind. Does that make sense? Like maybe like, I don't know if it's mental illness but I'm just getting, because I'm like getting like a visual of their mind and I'm getting something about their mind. Like maybe they're... I don't want to say that that's like how neurodivergent people are because like there's so many neurodivergent people that like are creative and artistic and open-minded. So it's like, I don't want to say that, but, but I'm hearing that word or I'm hearing something about their mind, like something, something with like some kind of mental disorder or illness or something like something about how their mind works, where it's like, they can't comprehend that diversity. They need to to fit everyone into these little easy to understand boxes. So it's like to you, to them, you were just sweet and angelic and loving. And they didn't realize you had that strong, powerful side. They didn't realize you were a goddess or a god as well. They thought you were just an angel. They didn't realize you had this whole other side to you. And, you know, they kind of screwed around and found out. And like I said, yeah, they, they thought that you would chase them. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to tell you like, like, don't give up on that side of yourself. That's a beautiful thing. Like, being angelic and empathetic and sweet and loving, it's amazing. It's pure. It's so rare in this world. So hold on to that energy. But, um, you know, because they love that about you. You know what I mean? Like, they really do love that. But it's just that they didn't comprehend that there was another side to you as well. They thought you were predictable is basically what I'm feeling. Like, they thought, they thought, like, I mean, even though in the moment they were telling themselves, okay, I'm going to choose the karmic or I'm going to, play hard to get or I'm going to make this toxic decision that's going to separate me from my true love they still in the back of their head they thought you were going to chase them they thought that you were going to cry or freak out or blow up their phone or tell them no baby I love you don't don't please don't leave me and when you when you like you were hurt I'm sure like maybe there was some crying back and forth but like you didn't chase them the way that they thought you were going to chase them you pulled your energy back and you stood in your power, you know, you stood in your power, male or female, and they just did not see that coming. And now they're realizing, like, it's almost like a little kid. Like, you see, like, those little kids at, like, grocery stores that, like, try to, try to run. It's almost like a little boy that tries to run from his mother and, like, tries to run and hide, but he always... He always goes to like the, the the corner or whatever and like peeks out and see if his make sure make sure that his mom is still chasing him. And if his mom's freaking out crying trying to find him, then he's he's won the game. But um, you know, if she if she pretends like she doesn't notice and she walks away, he freaks out and he chases her. And that's the thing. He thought you were gonna be that mother or father figure 
that was going to freak out and cry and chase him. And instead, you were just like, you were aware that he was somewhere else and you were hurt about it. You were upset, but you're like, you know what? I'm going to pretend like I'm walking. I'm going to take my energy back. I'm going to focus on me no matter how much it hurts. And they noticed that. they Now they're the one in pain. They, they... <sighs> That did not, whatever whatever that was, it backfired on them bad. Some of them really did not even want to lose you. Like some of them, this is just for a couple of you. But for a couple of you, like like I said, for most of you, I feel like this person did have, you know, reason to leave. Like not not good reason, but some of them felt like, like logically, like they needed to do it for their kids if they're in like a third party karmic situation married. Um, or like if they have like a good job and they don't want to leave that job or move somewhere else or something, something about just being comfortable. I just get, I keep hearing that they were hold they were holding on to like their comfort zone. Um, and like I said, if this is your reading, just email me all. I'm glad to do a, a in-depth, um, paid private reading for you. Um, I charge $50 for a 30 plus minute video reading, but a lot of them go into like an hour. A lot of them are like, you know, end up being like 45 minutes or longer. And I go in depth into all your questions, their energy, you know, whatever you want to know. But um, anyway, yeah, I just, I feel like, yeah, I just feel like it backfired. Oh, what I was saying is for a couple of you, I feel like they actually never wanted to leave you. They just wanted to keep you on your toes. It was like a power struggle, like a chaser chasey game where they liked, you have like a motherly or fatherly energy about you. And this person honestly has mommy or daddy issues is what I'm kidding here. Like they have a toxic mother or they have a toxic father. And they, they're repeating those, um, they're bringing that baggage into your, your connection here. You know what I mean? Some of them want to be babied, honestly. Some of them just, some of them act so immature that they have to be babied. Honestly, it's, it's a strange, it's an interesting energy. I get it, but it's, it's like... But, but some of them did not want to leave you. Some of them, some of them are addicted to the feeling of you chasing them and you babying them and you crying and reassuring them. Like, please don't leave me. We can work through it. Like, I'll be here for you. I love you. Like some of them just love that feeling. They love that reassurance. They love keeping you on your toes because they have abandonment issues and it lets them know that you're not going anywhere. And it's just like, they want to keep you chasing them. You know what I mean? So some of them pull away because they're afraid of losing you. They're afraid that you're going to pull away, that you are pulling away or that you're going to pull away at some point. That They have a lot of like insecurities. That's why I do feel mental illness with this group. I feel like they do. a lot of them do have some kind of mental illness. Full disclaimer, I cannot diagnose anything, but, but I, I do get some kind of something with their mind because I pick up like really bad abandonment issues. So some of them like, like if they feel like you're moving away or they feel like there's like a risk, even even like an imagined risk of you moving away, like an imagined risk of you possibly, you know, leaving them or choosing someone else or whatever, you know, they like to sabotage. They like to think worst case scenario, like, oh, he or she is going to leave me. They're going to cheat on me. They're going to break my heart. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. It might have been exhausting for some of you to even deal with all that energy with them, you know, constantly just just trust issues, just deep trust issues for a lot of you guys, for a lot of them. But, um, but yeah, some of them, it's like they pull away because they want you chasing them. Like they feel like, like they feel like they're getting in too deep, like they're falling too deeply in love, or they feel like they worry that you're going to leave or something. So they try to leave you first, or they try to pull away first so that they can keep the ball, you know, they can keep control of the connection so that they can keep you chasing them. And I feel like this time it backfired, like maybe in the past that's worked, but this time you're like, you know what? I've had, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this energy. And you, you just, you shocked them. They thought it was going to be predictable. They thought they could predict your, um, they thought you, they could predict how you'd react to this, to them putting you guys on a break or breaking up or whatever it was, or them moving away or ghosting or distancing. They thought they could predict how you were going to react to that and they couldn't predict it. And now they're shocked and they're sad and they're upset and confused. And they're wanting to come in with a love offer, but there's still a little bit of a, yeah, they're feeling isolated and alone. They have some bad karma for doing this to you. Honestly, your spirit guides are not happy. Your spirit guides are not happy that they did this to you. Yeah. Trapped, blocked, tied up, publicity, social media. 
I feel like they're ending these cords. Some of them have been stalking you, but they're coming out of that energy because maybe like someone's going to be sending a message on social media or something. So like someone's coming out of that energy. Yeah, fast moving energy. Some of you, they're going to send you a message really quickly, like just with Mercury retrograde or you're, you're messaging them for some of you, but there's like some kind of social media message here. So I'm getting like an end of a cycle, you know what I mean? Like something, something's got to give kind of energy, you know, because you've been miscommunicating. You guys have both been stubborn, but I mean, you don't deserve this energy. You don't deserve to have to, have to deal with that. But someone's been choosing their words wisely. They're planning their approach. They're planning how to talk to you. And um, let's see, what else can we get from this energy? What else can we get here? Yeah, a lot of you might be getting a message really quickly. I feel like you have to be careful, though, to set boundaries when you guys talk, though. Like, this person needs to understand that you're diverse, that you have both sides. They need to respect both sides of you. They can't expect you to be angelic in, in their life all the time. It's like, and like, what is that quote? Like, you can't expect an angel to live in hell. You can't expect a woman or a man to keep being an angel in your life if you're putting them through hell and this person needs to know that they need to they need to some of them some of them really did sabotage things and like throw things out there that you felt like were kind of like gas I don't know if gaslighting is the right word not maybe not as strong as gaslighting but like something fell off about it where you're kind of like like, why is this person sabotaging things? Or why, like, almost like they, I don't know, like, some of them, like, say certain things. Like, I'm just getting something with their words. Like, they say or do certain things. Like, they, um, how do I, I, I primarily channel, so I'm trying to feel, like, what that energy is. It's almost like, like, mind games a little bit, where it's like they say certain things to try to get a certain reaction out of you. Like, they'll say something, and it plays on your empathetic side. Like, they'll say something like, oh, I don't deserve you, or like, you're too good for me, or I'm so lucky to have, like, I don't know. I mean, those aren't bad things normally, but it's like the way they say them. It's like, there's something about certain things they say, and it's going to be different for each one of you, but it's like, it's like certain things that like they say that just didn't sit right with you because you felt like there was like a little manipulation to it. Like, they're trying to get a certain reaction from you when they say those things. They're trying to play on your empathetic side when they say those things, so even though on the surface, it seems like good intentions. You kind of felt something off with it. You're like, why are they planning their words out like that? Why are they, there's just something about something they said or something they did, like, or some kind of, like, the way they communicate or something. It's like they, it's almost like they communicate with a purpose. Like, they communicate to try to get a certain reaction from people. Like, someone, this could be someone that, like, studies body language and tries to read people and tries, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. But, you know, not when you're using it in toxic ways to manipulate people. And that's kind of what this person, for some of you, that's what this person does. You know, they, they try to, they don't let conversation flow naturally. They, they kind of, they choose their words. They plan their approach. They plan out what they're going to say. They try to, it's, it's like an ego thing. Like they try to be, they try to have the control in this connection. They try to have you chasing them, and they're they're shocked that that didn't happen this time around. You didn't chase them. You didn't break down. They're the ones that broke down now. They're the ones with the bad karma for doing this to you, and now they're the ones that, you know, want to end this cycle and come forward with a love offer, with commitment, with, um, with a message, with communication. They want to come in quickly, too, because some of them are kind of panicking. Some of them, it's like, like that little boy at the grocery store whose mom isn't anywhere to be found and now he's freaking out you know um it's like that kind of energy they're like oh my god like where is she or where is he like what are they doing who are they with like are they cheating did they meet someone new like what's like what's going on you know what i mean like this person's kind of freaking out a little bit they're like they did not expect this energy from you they did not know that you had this side to your personality some of them are shocked some of them are impressed too it's like they're shocked but they're kind of turned on at the same time they're like damn I didn't know she was that confident and that sassy and that honest and forward and gutsy. Like, I didn't know that or I didn't know he was like that. You know, like, I didn't I didn't know they had that side in themselves. Like, wow, they really put me in my place. You know, some of you, it's like they were the daddy and now you're the daddy. <laughs> like, you're the one that wears the pants in this relationship now, basically, male or female. 
you know, they tried to be the daddy and they fucked it up. So now you're the daddy, basically, is what I'm feeling here. Um, and there's a power struggle. There really is a power struggle here. It's a very interesting energy. Um, but my advice is just, you know, and, and like I said, if you want to, if you want a private reading, I can go more in depth into your specific person, what they're feeling, thinking, wanting, all specific details, who this person is to you, whatever you want to know, just send me an email. Um, that's the best way to get like specific answers for your specific situation. You know what I mean? Cause I can really go way more in depth and channel specific details for you in a private reading. But my advice just for the, just for the collective here, for this energy group is when this communication comes in, because like I said, this is like the little boy or the little girl that lost their mommy or daddy and now they're freaking out. They expect you to chase them and you're not and now they're about to chase you because they're heartbroken, they're crying over you, they're missing you. You switch things up on them and they're kind of turned on by it. Like I said, they're kind of like, wow, I didn't know they had this side to them. But you have to balance those energies. You have to, when this message comes in, my advice is just you have to balance those energies because you don't want to fall back into the old pattern where this person can manipulate you mentally. It's like, it's not quite abuse, but it's like a little bit toxic though, because they, they just there's something about the way they word things or how, what, what they say is kind of toxic. And you have to nip that in the bud. If you give this another chance, you have to be a couple steps ahead of them. You have to, um, and it's a power struggle too. So it's hard because at the same time, you guys need to get out of that power struggle energy but you need to set boundaries. You need to set clear, honest boundaries so that they can't just turn it into a power struggle where it's like, you know, they're passive aggressive, you're passive aggressive, you say little things here and there. You guys have to communicate maturely and you need to sit down and like set boundaries with them. Like, hey, I know what you mean. I, I see the energy behind when you say this or this or this and I don't like it and I'm not going to do that again. Like, yes, I'll give you a second chance, but we're not doing this again. We're not doing that again. We're not, you know like almost like not quite an ultimatum but almost where it's like you're like you know what like I don't like it when you say that it feels toxic don't say it anymore like you have to be really assertive you have to um you have to balance that angelic energy with the goddess energy or the god energy does that make sense like these two very it's like light and purity and love but also darkness and strength and assertiveness and power you have to balance these two energies really well and get out of this power struggle energy with them, but set boundaries at the same time and let them know that there's certain things that you're not going back to, that yes, you'll give them another chance, but you're not going to tolerate certain things they used to say or do. Um, you're not going to tolerate cheating. Like you have to set boundaries and you have to stick to them because I see that this person, even though they love you and miss you, they're still going to try to test the waters. Like they're, they have a very immature energy and I feel like you're going to be helping them grow up, honestly, if you guys are together. They have a lot of growing up to do still. But I feel like, um, like yeah, like your energies will balance each other out. But you just, you're going to have to be assertive and you're going to have to stick to your boundaries because they're going to test the waters. Like you say like, oh, I'm not okay with you saying, you know, this certain thing. And they're going to kind of say something similar to that just to see how you react. And you have to nip that in the bud quick. You have to be almost like a child, almost like a child where you have to be like, no, I know what you're trying to say there. And you cannot second guess yourself. You need to use your intuition because sometimes empaths do that. They second guess themselves. They allow people to gaslight them. They allow themselves, they allow people to cause this fog in their head. Don't let them convince you you're dramatic or you're emotional. If it's important to you, it's important. If it is important to you, then it is important. It doesn't matter if you're being dramatic or emotional or whatever. It's important to you. That's the only thing that they need to know. So like if they're, if they're saying, you know what I mean? Like if they're saying something that makes you uncomfortable, it doesn't matter if that wouldn't make anybody else uncomfortable. It's about you. Does this, it, you know, this is your connection. No one else is. So it's up to you what makes you comfortable or uncomfortable. You can have as strong a boundaries as you want. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, you can decide that you don't like certain things that most people would be okay with. That's okay. That's your choice. That's, that's, you know what I mean? Like, there's like, I mean, I wouldn't overdo it, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, just don't let, don't let people second guess yourself. You need to decide what's important to you and what is and isn't okay with you. So when this person tests the waters, you really need to be strong and call them out and not let them gaslight you or confuse you or manipulate the situation. You need to be on top of things. And I know when you miss someone and you reconcile, it's easy to just get caught up in the passion and romance and energy. 
and forget to set those boundaries because you're so happy to have them back. But you really need to um, to balance love and emotion and that angelic energy with strength and confidence and assertiveness and setting boundaries. So I hope that helps. As I said, um, if you'd like a private reading, just email me and please subscribe. Donations are appreciated. Thanks for watching.